Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart, for those of you that are new. And today, we have a six-game NBA slate here on DraftKings for Wednesday night. So, I'll be talking through the slates, kind of breaking down each game, who I like, who I don't like, kind of throwing them into an early look player pool. As always, injury news does change the entire slate. So, I always advise just to wait to about 30 to 15 minutes before the slate actually starts to actually do your research really quickly and then make your lineup. So, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Let's get right into this breakdown. Um, as I said, going to be recording these earlier in the night. So the slate tonight uh, has barely started, as you can see here. Uh, but one with McBride there, Schroeder, Edwards, Zion, uh, Sims, White, DiVincenzo, and Kyle Anderson. I'm not too happy about you know landing on Sims, but but just with how the injury news kind of you know shook out, uh, you know, it kind of came out to this is what I landed on. Uh, I like to get into you know McBride and DiVincenzo there. In terms of the offense there with the Knicks with no Brunson. Uh really like Schroeder there. Now that he's in the starting role. There's no Cam Thomas. So I like him to get you know good minutes there. I uh, hit a really solid first quarter. No cat. So Anthony Edwards is going to be the main offensive there. So I went with him and then Kyle Anderson down there to fill that in. Um uh, and then obviously really liked Kobe White here in this matchup and then um touched on everyone, then, then kind of just landed on Sims just because of the how the salary worked out so we'll see what uh, happens tonight hopefully uh, a pretty solid night so that's what i'm hoping for but i've gotten screwed so far every single slate but hopping into this six game slate here we'll start with the uh the mavs versus toronto the mavs are playing tonight so it, you know with a back-to-back -back, there is risk that they do rest some of these guys who are coming off injury like a luca you know even Kyrie's a rest candidate um even um i know gafford had a questionable tag going in tonight uh same thing with lively but uh, we'll see. We'll see with that the back to back. But as of right now, let's just assume everyone's in. And with that in mind, don't have much interest in any of these players. I mean, they're all kind of secondary plays for me. Obviously, if you feel fine with the value, you can pay up for Luca. Or if you want to get different, you can definitely pay up for Luca, even if there is no value. Uh, if you want to get different from the field, uh, Kyrie's going to be more so your secondary option. You know, contrarian and GPPs. And then I would have interest in like PJ Gafford and Lively, depending on how many minutes they play tonight, and if there's any sort of minutes limit with the injuries. Uh, but if none of them are on a minutes limit, um, and you know, if they get close to mid twenties, even one of them sees thirty plus minutes, I would have interest in that. So it's kind of one of those things we have to wait and see. But right now, more secondary options on the Dallas side. For the Raptors side here, obviously we know with the the Raptors, it, it's a three headed monster in terms of the offense. Scotty quickly and Barrett are going to lead the offense, so they're all very strong plays at the price tags. Obviously, it kind of feels like a lot to get to Scotty, but he's he's one of those triple double threats as you can see. Um. You know, came close about four games ago, got it that last game. So it was, as we can see, he is monster upside there, playing a ton of minutes. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, 9.2 feels fine for him. Quickly, Barrett, I, I like them a little bit more, even though they're a little bit more, you know, I guess scoring dependent, even though they've both been great uh, peripheral stat wise. Uh, but they all look like very, very strong plays here. Uh, Portal, I really like him if he's good to go. Now, he did leave that last game there. He was actually doing very well, as you can see, 37 fantasy points in 22 minutes. I mean, that's the upside that he can have. And, um, you know, they'll need him to match up with lively. Uh, so I actually do like him here a good amount if he's good to go, but if he's out or minutes limit, then we could definitely look to, um, who they, I don't know who they replace him with. Maybe they go back to John Tay Porter, but whoever they replace him with, I, I don't see big minutes for whoever fills in for the center role here. So with that in mind, I don't have a ton of interest there. Um, you know, unless you're looking for cheap value, cheap, you know, maybe Kelly Olenek slides in that starting lineup, but even then. Who knows if he plays full minutes, maybe he sees his original, his, you know, normal 20, 18 to 25 minutes. If that's the case. I think he'd be a solid play, uh, but otherwise not a ton to love here. Grady Dick's interesting. No, he has been pretty solid uh, in terms of value there, but he's risen all the way up to 3.8 K. So he's fairly priced. Moving on to the Pelicans here. Another team that is playing tonight. Um, so there is risk that, you know, Zion gets ruled out or Brandon Ingram gets ruled out. TJ got ruled out tonight. So, I would assume he's been practicing. I would assume he's back tomorrow, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do rest Zion or uh, Ingram. More likely Zion, just because he has been some missing some games. Uh, so I think that's kind of how it's going to roll, is that they're going to rest uh, Zion probably for this game tomorrow, and then roll with you know Brandon Ingram and CJ. If that's the case, um, obviously really, really like Brandon Ingram and really, really like CJ here to lead this team. And I would have a good amount of interest in a guy like Trey Murphy there, um, you know, 5.7 K not the best price tag, but in terms of the minutes and upside, if he gets hot from the floor, he can easily go for 30, 35 plus. So 
I do have a good amount of interest in him. And I would really like, you know, Hawkins off the bench there. Has been getting too involved recently, but if there is no no Zion, it can definitely open up the, the space for him to get a little bit more minutes there. And Willie Green did say he wants to, uh, you know, throw some more run there for um, Jordan Hawkins. So what to wait and see, but interest there. Larry Nance, if you think, you know, the Pelicans go small, Larry Nance is a guy to take a GPP dart throw on. But otherwise, I really think you just stick with the main guys of the offense, uh, which would probably be, you know, Brandon Ingram, CJ, if they're good to go. And then, you know, maybe look to a Hawkins or a Murphy there if you want to get a little bit more contrarian. Moving on to Indiana here on the Indiana side. I mean, my boy, Halliburton absolutely screwed me there that last game. Worst game of the season, uh, besides that Sacramento game there, which um, it looks like he was still in the minutes limit. So, though, yeah, I mean, I think it's the worst game of the season for him in terms of full minutes. Like, horrendous. Now, he was 30% owned, so I won't complain too much, but. Yeah, I got absolutely screwed there, but I don't mind going back to all there with him. We know the upside there with him. Uh, with Pascal, as you can see, I mean, he has really good upside. It's just going to be kind of once every few games that he flashes it uh, until they kind of figure out the offense. But I do think he's an interesting GPP option. Turner, another one of those guys, we know the upside there is with him. But as you can see, minutes are not great. The shot attempts are kind of fluctuating. So... I just don't love paying the price tag for a guy whose you know shot attempts fluctuate that much, even though he does have good upside. I'd rather pay down for a guy like Benedict Matherin, who should start. Uh, was obviously super aggressive there, definitely because Halliburton was a little bit uh, less aggressive, just because he wasn't playing well. Matherin stepped up, but I, I do like him once again. Six point two K price has risen a little bit, but he should be good to go if there's no Naismith. Now there, there is Naismith. Wouldn't be surprised if they move Matherin back to the bench. Off the bench, wouldn't probably get to him at that price tag. And I would have a little bit of Naismith. He's not on a mental limit. Now, if he is, it really takes out the interest in all these guys besides maybe, you know, landing on Pascal or getting to Halliburton. Moving on to Cleveland here versus Chicago. Obviously, a very, very tough matchup for Chicago. And Chicago is playing tonight, so it's a back-to-back for them. Definitely going to be some blowout risk here, but I absolutely love getting to, I'd say, at least one or two calves just because the Bulls seem to be very terrible and they always give up uh, great games to the star opponents. So I really, really like Donovan Mitchell. And out of the the, the next, you know, cream of the crop in terms of Allen, Mobley, and Garland, I really like Allen, or excuse me, Mobley. Um, you know, I really like Mobley. I really like Donovan Mitchell. I think it's going to be a matchup nightmare for the Bulls in terms of trying to guard Evan Mobley. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bulls go uh, too bigs like they did last time. And with that in case, I, I really like Mitchell, really like Mobley. I think Allen and Garland are going to be solid contrarian options. Don't have much interest in the other players. It's really just those guys. So I will throw Mobley and Mitchell into the player pool right now. And then moving on to the bull side here. Obviously, as I say, the, the offense runs through the three main guys of Kobe, DeRozan, and Vooch. Now, Isle, as I said, has been stepping up a ton recently. I mean, the minutes have been insane. He's actually been playing very, very well, very, very efficient, shooting the ball extremely well, and he's been playmaking. So really not hard not to like him once again, just because the minutes, I mean, the, he should be priced to about 6.5K with how he's been playing. So once again, really hard not to like Isle there. I uh, really, really like Kobe right there at 7.3. I don't mind if you land on Vooch or DeRozan there. They're both really solid plays. Cruz is also another very, very solid play there. If you're looking for a, a cheap-ish guard, 5.2K, obviously struggles offensively, but you know he's going to be playing 30-plus minutes. They're going to need this defense on Donovan Mitchell, so I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for 30-plus if they keep this game close. Now, as we can see here for the Bulls, um, actually, I'm going to rewind a little bit. Last time the Bulls played the Cavs, uh, Drummond started, as you can see here, pull him up on the 14th. He played uh, 28 minutes, went 10 of, you know, 10 for 15. He went... 10 and 15, so double double there, 32 fancy points in Io. Um, let's pull him up real fast. He still played 33 minutes, but he came off the bench and he was the least aggressive he's been pretty much since he's gotten his start. So that's the only down, downside with Io is the minutes will be down a little bit and the shot attempts will be down as well uh, if they do run with that, that big lineup. So keep an eye on that because if that happens, then I'd, I'd have a good amount of interest in Drummond and it'd probably take the interest out of Io for me, even though he should still see 30 ish minutes. Um, I, I'd rather just get him if he's starting. Uh, so obviously keep your eyes peeled for that. Moving on to Memphis here versus the uh, Timberwolves. Two teams that are playing tonight. Uh, or excuse me, Memphis just played last night. So they're not playing tonight, but Minnesota is playing tonight. But on the Memphis side here, 
Uh, really, really, really like the two guys at the top, Jaron Jackson Jr. and Vince Williams. Jaron Jackson Jr. absolutely screwed me last night. Two of 12, 26 and a half fancy points. Absolutely, absolutely screwed me. But I don't mind Martin in the back with him. It's just one of those things, you know, huge blowout risk here going against what should be a fully healthy Timberwolves team. So you really just hope this game stays close. Because if it does, you know, Williams and Jackson Jr. should both have huge games. So really I like them as the kind of the more so contrarian plays there because of the blowout risk. Gigi Jackson. Looks like he's only be going to be playing about, you know, mid 20s minutes. Now he did shoot it 13 times, which is interesting to see. So if he's going to be that aggressive, wouldn't mind getting to him, but obviously he did get a, a good amount of blowout run there. So he's just more so uh, a dart throw play in terms of anyone else. Not much interest. I mean, they're very, very uh, depleted right now. I, I still like, you know, good one. If he does, you know, randomly get the starts, but they haven't been running him out there. D Rose is back. We'll mention that he only played 15 minutes. So it's just a very gross team to get to right now. It's just more. So I'm going to wait for the starting lineup to see. And then really it's just kind of the main two guys for me. Otherwise I don't have a ton of interest in Memphis, Minnesota side cat is not playing tonight, um, but I would assume he's going to be back for this game tomorrow. As you can see, he's out for a personal matter. So he should be back fully healthy team with that in mind. Really, really like Edwards, really, really like, really like towns. If you think this game stays close, that's really it. Not much interest in anyone else here. McDaniels is interesting. Uh, the minutes are kind of fluctuating a little bit. Obviously not the best uh, offensive player at all, especially behind Cat and Towns, or excuse me, Cat and Ant. But 3,900 for a guy who's going to be playing close to 30 minutes, you, you can definitely land on him. Moving on to the Kings here versus the Nuggets. Kings side, it's really just a four-man show. Sponus, Fox, both look very, very good. Sponus is obviously the safest play just because he's had massive triple-double upside and his price still doesn't move. Don't really get it, but yeah, he looks really, really good. Uh, obviously a tough matchup against uh, Jokic, but you know this game should be a fun one to watch. Uh, Fox has really been turning on recently, as you can see. 40, 30, 28, 33, 27. So he's really hitting the stride here. He's been really, really aggressive. So really, really like the want to get, get into at least one of those two. Now, Keegan Murray's coming off a huge game. Uh, he's been pretty, pretty bad recently until that last game. So, I mean, that's the kind of upside he has alongside Sabonis, alongside Fox. So, he's always in play for GPPs, and same thing with Monk. He's a little bit of the safer option just because uh, he's been seeing solid minutes. He's been super aggressive, and he's actually been really good at getting assists and some peripheral stats. So, he's definitely the safer option compared to Keegan. I, I really don't think there's a need to get to Keegan. I'd rather just get to Monk if you're looking for uh, someone because he's shooting guard and small forward eligible, which really helps you out uh, in terms of the rest of the team value. Sure. You can land on Lyles. Sure. You can land on Barnes. Duarte's getting a little bit of run, but not much interest here. I mean, Herder's there. Minutes are fine if you land on him, but don't love it. Moving on to Denver here on the Denver side. Jokic looks good. If you love the value or if you want to get different by spinning up from, even if you don't like the value, those are two ways to get to him. But Murray is probably the most interesting to me. 7.8K should be seeing normal minutes. Uh, and he always goes really hard against teams that are going to be playing in the playoffs for some reason. That, that's just his thing. Loves going against those guys. Uh, so I expect a big game here for Murray at 7.8. And I do like the the price tag on the MPJ a little bit. Obviously, he's scoring dependent, but we know he's massive upside if he can hit his shots and threes and can easily go for a double-double. But yeah, really, really, really like Jamal Murray there. And that's about it for Denver. Uh, obviously, Jokic and PJ are both firmly in play. And then for the Lakers here, uh, the big news is Anthony Davis, if he's good to go, which it, hopefully he is. Um, it'd be very annoying if we had to wait all nights because most people are not going to play for the fact that Anthony Davis might be out. And there's a little bit of blood risk here going against the Clippers if he's out. So we'll just say he's in for now. <laughs> With it, that being said, I, I think LeBron's coming at a pretty cheap price tag, 9.1. I mean, it's going to be the cheapest we'll probably get him all season. So I really like getting to LeBron here, even though it's a little bit of a tough matchup against the Clippers. Same thing with AD. They both look really, really good. In terms of the rest of the guys, I mean, Russell's been still very, very solid. Reeves, kind of the same thing. But they, they kind of feel priced about right. I, I don't think I'd go out of my way to play him if I did. Um, it'd probably only be if, you know, LeBron or AD are out. Um, that's when you want to get to them. Otherwise, I think they're just better plays, but, you know, cheaper plays who have the same upside and our option, at least, you know, the first option or second option on the teams where Russell's like the third option. On the Clipper side here, uh, Kawhi Leonard is going to be leading this team in terms of offense alongside Harden. Uh, Paul George is out. So with him being out, um, 
it's going to be, I, I think they slid Norman Powell there. They did slide Norman Powell into the starting lineup. So it's going to be Kwai, Arden, Zubak, Norman Powell, and then Terrence Mann. Then off the bench, we'll get a little bit of Russ, Plumley, Coffee, a little bit of Tice, but his minutes have, you know, kind of plummeted there. So in terms of the Clippers, I, I think Kwai and Harden are both very strong plays here. Um, you know, Harden, I think is probably the more interesting one. Uh, he'll probably be the more popular one. So I, I don't want mind if you land on Kawhi, if you want to get a little bit difference, but they should both really step up. They both look like really, very strong plays. Zubac is always interesting in GPPs, especially if Anthony Davis plays, you know, expect Zubac to play at least mid twenties minutes. If he can stay out of foul trouble, would not be surprised if he goes for a really good game. So I, I like getting to Zubac there, especially if you want to get, you know, very different. Uh, you know, if Drummond does start, if you want to get different, you can definitely go to Zubac over Drummond, like, like a nice pivot play. You'll probably get him at a fraction of the ownership if that happens. You know, Drummond will probably come in at like 50% owned, if not more. Zubac will probably come in at like five. So uh, that would be interesting play there. Russ uh, played only 18 minutes, but he's still viable at 5.3. I think Norman Powell is very interesting. He played 37 minutes. Going to be, you know, still going to be very score independent, even though he's in the starting lineup, but still. He definitely has upside, especially at 4.8K. Uh, that's really it. You know, Man and Plumlee are there, but I don't think there's a need to get to either one of them. So that's going to be the breakdown for today, uh, Today, guys. Hope you guys like the video. Uh, in terms of the core plays, I'd say right now, once again, it's going to be Kobe White. Um, I, I like Mobley a lot there. Drummond, we have to wait for the injury news. So it's right now, these are the core plays for me. Obviously, there's a good amount of injury news. and kind of see what happens with the bull starting lineup that does affect the slate. So hope you guys like the video. Hit that like button. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.